Hi, hi. I'm going to go quickly over what to keep in mind when you create your next presentation. Be seen, make sure the text is big enough. The 28 point is a very good size, and this one, 24, is too small. You're going to have to use contrasting color schemes, so the user can read easy from your presentation. And be clear, don't use serif font that has these decorations here on the ends. Use sans serif, one good is Arial, and the other one is Verdana. Don't use italics also, they're harder to read on the screen. And if you want to emphasize something, then use bold or color. The simple's the best, so basic light colored background and dark text. Always avoid distracting images and limit the transitions, animations, and sound effects. That's also very distracting, or can be. Now, don't think too much about the design. Try to keep it always simple and not distracting. Plan ahead and remember your purpose, what your presentation is about. Always practice it once or twice, see what comes after the next mouse click. And you have to have the first page as a title page. The next page has to be a contents page, which tells the audience what you're going to be talking about, what your topics are. Now don't read from your screen. You're going to use your note pages to read from, or little cards that you take with you. And always face front to the audience while you're talking to them. The bullets can be just there to prompt you, so remember in what order you're speaking about your, your topic. And don't use too many colors, nor fonts and styles, and the 6x7 rule is a very good one, which means you avoid long sentences, no more than 6 lines per slide, and no more than 7 words per line. Now this is, of course, understanding versus overload. You're not putting too much text and confusing the audience, you just keep it simple, and only the things that you're going to be speaking about. Now this is an example of what's too confusing and too much text. And here you can see a much better one. About images, only use them to communicate, and they have to be in relation to the text or the topic. And this presentation that you're going to be doing next time is about communication, which is chapter 9, and you will be talking about text messaging or using a messenger, using uh, Facebook or other communication sites on the internet, how you are able to connect to the internet, and everything about HTTP and HTML. You're going to work in pairs, so you're going to have to share the workflow, and I want you to, to have at least 10 slides, hopefully more, and please use these guidelines to get 100 marks. Now, use topics in Chapter 9 that help you, so if there's something you're not sure about, something that you find difficult, then use that as an opportunity to learn more about it. Okay, remember to practice and well before you present it, so you'll do it flawlessly, and I look forward to see your presentations. Bye-bye. My name is Oliver. And my name is David Jackson. We're from Year 11, and this is our presentation of Networks That Work For Next. Everyone uses networks in the internet nowadays, but no one truly knows the depth about it and how much more there is to a simple box to just plug into the wall to get internet. There are many ways of getting internet and many other ways of using it, but, as with everything else, there's always a risk. We're here to tell you what you need to know about networks and what to do to prevent risks such as things happening to you on the internet. So these next 10 slides will tell you everything you need to know about our World Wide Web. This is our contents page, this is what we'll be talking to you about. And this slide uh, shows the creators of the internet. Uh, there are many creators of the internet, the uh, top six being um, Tim Berners-Lee, Mark Andreessen, Eric Biner, Kevin Hughes, Rob Hartle, and Lowe Montiel. Um, they are all part of the Worldwide uh, Web Hall of Fame. Uh, but there was another person, Al Gore, who said he created the internet. But um, throughout future, we find out that it wasn't true. Networks. There are different types of networks you can use to access the internet. LAN, which is a local area network, most widely used, uh, which is the most wide, widely used, as most of you will have their own wireless connection at home to connect to the internet. WAN, though, stands for Wide Area Network, which is usually used internationally, which allows computers to connect to a large geographical area compared to the small geographical area you have for a LAN. A VPN, which is a virtual pro uh, personal network, is a safe list of choices, usually and are only accessed with one computer. The most common VPN is a dongle or an internet stick, which is fast but usually limited. The internet is a great way to do research, especially if you need to hand in homework and you have no clue what you're writing about. For that, Vickies are really good. I mean, they give you a lot of information, but the downside is that everyone can edit it and some of the information might not be real. Uh, topic specified websites are better in that case, but as always, some people just might troll you and post something that's completely irrelevant. Um, new sites are probably one of the best ones for research because they're factual and it's really hard to fake information on those. Uh, 
uh, examples of that are BBC News, CNN, and Fox News. Also a good way of doing research is looking at university databases. They usually contain information written by students, and I guess that's exactly what you're looking for.